Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the TMS pod. Uh, and I know we've been a little bit MIA over the last couple of weeks, but we're back now and we're going to try to get back on that weekly posting schedule. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Anyways, in this episode, we have the one and only Sam Newton. Now, if you've been around the filmmaking side of YouTube at all, you know who Sam Newton is, but if you don't, Sam is a full-time travel filmmaker who creates some pretty awesome travel films, but also he dabbles in music and is a musician, and he makes some of the most creative and also funny music videos and raps about camera and filmmaking related things. They're awesome. If you haven't seen them, definitely go check them out. They're going to be linked down below in the show notes. And uh, today we talk with Sam, not about the musician side and the music side of things, but a bit more about the uh, travel filmmaking side and about how he got into it, what it's like being a full-time travel filmmaker, as well as how somebody today can start from scratch and become a travel filmmaker for themselves. So enjoy. Sam, how is the yogurt? And he's in the oh, middle of eating. Sorry. Nice. I, I got him at the worst time. He's eating. <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a bad move to take that second bite. It was great. The yogurt's great. I'm doing great. You guys are looking great. Thank you for having uh, me. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for coming you. on. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> Stephen, I'll start the intro. What are you doing? Oh, God. We're ruining this already. Okay. <laughs> uh, wait, do we want to? No, we're good. We're just going to roll with it. So, um... Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, Sam is here, and we're going to be asking him some questions about his filmmaking and other things related to that. So, I mean, okay, I like to launch into these and ask everybody the same question, and it's also probably the same question you've probably been asked a million times on a podcast, mm -hmm. but how did you get into filmmaking, and what is your origin story as to how this whole thing started? Oh, nice. It's a, it's a question I've been asked a million times, but it's a question I love answering, so no okay, problem that's at all. Good. Um, hi, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Sam. I'm a full-time travel filmmaker. I currently have a piece of granola in my mouth. Um, I'm a full-time travel filmmaker. Uh, I'm now full-time on YouTube and basically got my start back in 2012. 2011 is when I first had a camera, my dad's old GoPro, but 2012 is when I first started like cutting up videos. Uh, and it was my freshman year of college. And essentially, I was a big soccer player, always have been big, big soccer player right. my whole life. And that yeah. was like, that was my life, my identity. That was me, right? I played soccer. That's who Sam was. Uh, but then Sam the soccer guy. Sam the soccer guy. But I'm a five foot nine goalkeeper. And nobody, <laughs> colleges don't really want to recruit five foot nine goalkeepers. And so uh, I needed a new hobby quickly. And I went to college and picked up, or basically just stole my dad's GoPro. He bought, like, I think it's the GoPro Hero 2. And he used to put it behind the net of my soccer games nice. for my, like, goalkeeper highlights. And so cute. I knew he Look didn't need it anymore because I wasn't playing goalkeeper. And so I didn't even ask him. And I just kind of took it with me to college to film some stuff. And... Then I got to college and would start making little monthly videos of what me and my friends did out there. So like right. um, January 2013, I think it started in 2013 was the very first like, you know what I'm going to do. And so for every single month in 2013, I have a, a recap video, which is kind of cool to look back on. Nice. But I have yeah, January 2013, February 2013. Are you are you filming things like at like like what like filming things that you actually went out and did or are you kind of like just talking to camera giving a recap? Oh no, zero percent talking to camera. It wasn't like okay. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. It was just one hundred percent like me and my friends are like, oh, you know, I was eighteen at the time, so it's like right. hey, let's go jump off cliffs and let's go ride our bikes around and wear uh, we had like old American presidents masks that we'd put on. Just stupid <laughs> stuff you did when you're nice. eighteen. I don't know. Nice. Uh and we'd film it and um I had all this footage, so I was like, I'm going to make a monthly recap. And that's where I kind of got into editing. And uh, that's where I fell in love with filmmaking, so to speak. And then basically just kind of stumbled my way through through college, knowing uh, I, I found out in college that I wanted to be a filmmaker. And then when I realized that, I was already going to a college that was not made for filmmakers. There was no... Which college were you going to? I went to UC Davis. Um, okay. So for anybody who's listening that knows UC Davis, you might laugh because it's an agricultural science school. It is very <laughs> much like the biggest major is like vet veterinarian, vet, 
veterinarian, hard word. Um, right. It's just not meant for, like, cow, I could see cows from my dorm room. That's not even a joke. Like, I look <laughs> what? out. What? Um, yeah. True story. And so it's a very agricultural science school, and I went to, but it's a great school, really good school. And I just went because it was the best college I got into, and then I quickly found out I wanted to be a filmmaker, or, or at least make videos. But um, there was no real major. There was a a major called technocultural studies, and right. that was the mo- that was the digital media major. But it was so like, like what a college way to say that. It was yeah, so annoying. Yeah. And so there was only like fifty people in the major, and. Once I got into the major, I started talking to people in my classes like, do you want your degree to say this? And they're like, no, nobody does. And we actually did a petition to change it to digital media. So by the time I graduated, my uh, nice. uh, degree says Good digital man. media. Good man, making the changes. But it That's doesn't, it. it's not like anyone's ever in my life asked for my degree. <laughs> and honestly, now looking back, it would have been cooler if I had a degree in technocultural studies. Because people yeah, like, true. <laughs> So yeah. eclectic and just like so offbeat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Got this weird degree. But the lucky part about that is since there wasn't a film school, there weren't people that made films there. And that's when my uh, entrepreneurial side kicked in. And basically people started uh, seeing my monthly videos. And then a sorority on campus asked me to make a... Uh, like a recruitment video for them and they're the queens of social right. media and so I made one and that just blew up and from that day on I was like oh wow this <laughs> to this, this day you're do still something. getting clients and, from that recruitment video yeah <laughs> to this day I still owe uh uh Alexandra Fong uh, a big thank you so yeah that's nice. good Wow, that's a very that's awesome that's, that's a very un- I said this is a very unconventional origin story I would say because I know a lot of these I mean especially from what I've seen there seems to be like a lot of this day and age there's a lot of super young people that are getting into it so they start watching youtube videos and getting into filmmaking when they're like 13 14 15 so the time they even reach college age they're like oh yeah i already want to be like a youtube filmmaker like that's what i want to be mm-hmm. and so it's just kind of interesting you're like oh i did school and or then they I think if they're after. not at a certain level by the time they get to college they're like i'm fucked i'm not gonna yeah. i'm not gonna that's, make it it's like i didn't that's exactly I didn't what i was gonna client say. video till i was like 19 or 20 so yeah like, yeah, like you can now, I mean, especially this is a, a whole thing with social media, but you can now compare yourself to the next guy so easily by seeing what they make. And it's also worldwide. So you're competing with some kid in the Netherlands and some kid in Belgium and some kid across the States from you. And you're like, oh, I'm not as good as he is. And I'm older than he is. Like, it makes you feel like shit sometimes. So Yeah, and that can work for anything, right? And there's probably some, yeah. like someone in their early 30s or maybe 40s listening to the podcast right now that's just starting out and they're like oh but 20 was so young and so like yeah that yeah. game is all is never ending you can always play it. it's just like you there's always start. a kid who's one year younger <laughs> and a bit better than you like it's <laughs> always there you just gotta start you gotta start but that i think mine was when i started was back in 2012 and there was social media but not nearly the right. way it is now and i think that was a huge benefit for me because I yeah. was just posting because I was like, my friends really like this, these videos. And it was literally just making these videos for my friends yeah. and then other people in my college to see. But like, there was yeah. no concept of like these videos going anywhere beyond right. that. So yeah. then like, I think, I think oh, yeah, Instagram is like the worst for that kind of thing to the point where I don't even open up Instagram anymore. I'll look at it once a week, maybe. And I'm like, cause I'm like, it's just not worth it. It's just, I'm going to go there. I'm going to feel like garbage after. And what was the point? There's really no point in doing that. So. Yeah. I wish there was a way to like, just have Instagram messages like yeah. down yes. separately. And then yeah, I think you could, I thought you could do that though. Get it just into messenger, but I don't know. You can it's like, I think so. You can kind of divert it over just to messenger. So you can just do all messaging through Instagram or what is it? Facebook messenger, Facebook which messaging, is now Instagram but messaging. Yeah. I mean, that would so. be. That would be really nice because like then I could just completely cut out obviously uh, all the Instagram stuff because especially if you're in the content creation game, honestly looking at a lot of people's content can give you inspiration, but it can also just kind of like make you feel like shit because you're just like I'm not as good as this person and stuff like that. Like it, it almost never God. benefits you. Like I see I see Carl's yeah. Carl Shakur's TikTok or short form stuff now, and I'm like, fuck. I gotta do like I gotta be. He's 10 posting times every day, ten <laughs> times a day, and we'll also and the cover. I, I'm just more blown away about the cover image on that. He just has a banger photo every single day for every short form. And it's, it's not even a photo that you look at all that closely. Like it's just the cover photo on the uh, on the yeah, Instagram feed page. And that's yeah. the benefit of Carl having done this for six years. He has this 
endless collection of photos, and he's just one yeah, of the most yes. hardworking people I've ever met. Uh, yeah. And he's six one, jacked out of his mind. <laughs> Looks gorgeous. like a Greek god. Talk, yeah, talk about not needing to compare yourself to people like. Yeah. That, yeah, Carl's the standard. He's so yeah. good at so many things. It's like if you compare yourself to Carl, you're not going to. Um, yeah, uh, you'll you'll quickly find far. yourself depressed and alone and just like not want to do anything. But Carl Shakur for anybody listening. Yes, S H A K U R. Yeah, go check him go out. Check him out. It's unreal. Yeah. So okay. So from there, you did videos in college, and then now you are now a travel filmmaker. How do those two lines, two points, connect? Um. <clears throat> Basically, I graduated college, and at that point in time, by the time I graduated college, I was like, all right, I know this is what I want to do. I want to make videos, or at least try. And so when I graduated, I was like, there's no point in applying for jobs, and I wanted to travel because I had never, I, the furthest I'd ever traveled was Mexico. And there was the only country I'd, so I'd been to the United States and Mexico. And for People from Southern California going to Mexico is very much not like a trip. It's it's just like uh, Mexico is, it all is where you same. go. Yeah, it's it's a uh, well the coast of Mexico. It's beautiful. It's awesome, but it's not like you're really going too you're far. You're not going yeah. far. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it wasn't like I had really traveled too far, and uh, I all I wanted to do was travel, and so I hadn't really left the country besides Mexico until I was 22. And I was like, all right, well, I want to travel. I want to do a little Europe trip. I had about, I remember I had ju just under $1,000 in my bank account when I graduated college. And I asked my parents, or I was supposed to walk. And so during graduation where they give you the diploma and do all that, my grandparents had tickets to fly out. And it was like a whole thing. The hotels were booked. Um, and I got an offer to do a wedding the day that I walked. And I called my parents. Luckily, it was like six months before I was supposed to walk. So I called my parents. I'm like, hey, I want to go to Europe. And this is the only way I'm going to pay for it is by doing this wedding. And they were like, but this is like, we'd love to see you graduate. This is really important to us. And I'm like, are you going to pay for my Europe trip? And they said, no. And I said, <laughs> okay. I'm doing this. Perfect. I love you, but I'm sorry. <laughs> the and, sacrifice. Uh, Holy. Yeah, so they, they called, and luckily they got refunded for everything, so I didn't feel like I had to uh, pay back for that. But, um, yeah, then I went and shot a wedding. I think I got, like, $2,500, which was enough money to fly to Europe. And uh, me and my friend Gabe and Lewis at the time, we went to Europe for six weeks, and that is the very first time I ever traveled out of the uh, – to besides Mexico again. Uh, very first time I ever like traveled by myself to like actually traveled. And where did you go in Europe? We went all over. We hit I think 13 countries and Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. so the classic Euro trip like London and to France, up into Amsterdam, Germany, Czech Republic, yeah. Um, however, we we had that money but I'm like let's hit up as many businesses as we can cuz I make videos like why not and I had, you know, I had paid off the majority of my student loans by doing videos in college. And so, like, I would already, I had already kind of found myself as a videographer and an entrepreneur. So I was like, well, why not reach out to companies? We made a list of like uh, 3,000, 4,000 companies. Oh my and God. we reached out to all of them before we went. And, you know, the response rate was terrible. It was, you know, out of that, maybe like 300 people got back to us and out of those right. 300 people that got back to us there were like 280 no's and then we had 20 people that were like kind of interested and out of the 20 people that were kind of interested we got three yeses but luckily of those nice. three yeses it was the european rail system uh it was wombat city hostel which was a hostel chain out there and it was the third one's random it's a called calibus it's basically like a weed brand clothing company uh, okay. who was the only one that paid us so my very first travel client was calibus uh shout out them they they gave me like really? 500 500 to make a commercial for their um t-shirts and then uh, the European rail system in Wombat City Hostel just gave us free travel and free places to stay while we're in Europe yeah. in exchange for some videos, now, and, which saves would, so you know much what money. This would have been 2016. 2016. Okay, so I guess influencer and travel influencing, like kind of like where you get paid or pay people pay to do this kind of stuff, isn't as big. 
because like obviously now it's way more common. So like mm-hmm. I feel like your response rate would at least be higher, whether it's a no or a yes. But there are more people doing it now, but like people were just so not used to something. Yeah, like but that, even then, I think for me, it's like a proof of concept of like if you reach out to enough people, if you like have that persistence, eventually you're going to get a yes, right? It's just kind of like the yeah. the salesman's mentality of like yeah. if you knock on enough doors. You're going to come across somebody who's going to say yes to you. Yeah. Um, the squeaky wheel gets the oil on that one. A squeaky wheel gets the oil, you know? They always say yeah. that. My my, yeah. my dad always said that in the morning. <laughs> uh, the, even a blind squirrel finds it's not. That's <laughs> right. That's, that I love that one, one too. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I would say we went out there, and that was my first, like, travel experience. And then I quickly realized, I'm like, okay, there's potential to go out and, like, make stuff and get paid to make stuff. And um, why would I stop here? Why would I apply for a job? And so I got back, and then the next two months I was living back at my parents' house, and I just reached out to so many more people. Um, and got. Are you this sending like to- personalized? Are you sending like personalized emails to every yeah. single one, oh, or are you crazy. batch sending? It was like it was a little merch. bit of both. Um, we knew the <laughs> okay. batch sending never works. Everybody knows the batch sending never works. No yeah. one li- wants to copy paste, um, but. It was a little bit of copy paste, so we had a uh, Excel doc, which I I looked for the other day and I couldn't find it. I was kind of bummed. Um, oh, shit. But an Excel doc, not kidding, like five thousand. They're mostly direct to consumer companies, so right. If you make hats, watches, anything we could fit in a backpack, um, backpacks, yeah. water bottles, uh, clothing. <laughs> you could companies. take somebody's product and put it in the other person's backpack. <laughs> we oh, don't worry. We were thinking about it. That or experience based stuff. Anything we didn't okay. need to actually pack, like hotels, uh, you know, rental car, stuff like that. Experience based. Yeah. Uh, we had this list, and it was basically like, uh, you know, we'd, we'd choose a product, like a backpack, and then we'd go in and we'd find 40 backpack companies. And then we'd have a copy paste next to it of like the, their email. And a lot of times it was like info at, Backpack.com, but you know, you'd send, you'd fire off that email and just ask, like, hey, if this isn't the right person, can, like, do you mind forwarding this to somebody who could better help? Right. Even the smallest thing like that, a lot of times yeah. people are like, oh, yeah. And sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you get uh, a marketing manager who was just hired, who's looking for new people, and they're like, actually, yeah, that's kind of a cool idea. Uh, you never really know unless you do it. And so we reached yeah, out. Right. And so I got back from that Euro trip. I was like, wow, there were actually some people interested in my travel stuff, even when I had no travel stuff. Uh, so what if I actually now have a portfolio and then I try it again and then keep building on it? And um, that next trip around the world, I think, was just shy of four months. And I went to Guam, Vietnam, Kenya, Thailand, um, and that's it. And you paid nice. for all of this doing this whole like email. 100% get money. through. Uh, basically, I was like, I was finding people to pay for my plane ticket and put me up. Yeah. Don't right. pay me, just get me there. Um, and right. Guam, it was the most random. Uh, I filmed, uh, oh, that t shirt company I was talking about, Calibus. They had a film, fe- or not a film festival, a music festival out in Guam. They're based out of Guam. And yeah. I flew out there and did the music festival i filmed the recap video um and it was like a one weekend thing but i was like hey can i stay can i stay on your guys's couch for three weeks and so i spent basically (laughs) a month in guam after i had shot that so i stayed on their couch edited the video turned it around and then just hung out on a couch in guam and then from there there was this professor at uc davis that was studying a fruit based out of vietnam and she had emailed me like, hey, we're looking for some on-the-ground footage. Is this something you'd be willing to go and get? And I'm like, absolutely. Um, and so I flew out to Vietnam. And I uh, by then I was like- Did they pay for that? They paid to get you there? Uh, or was yes. it just like on your own deck? Yeah, yeah. So okay. they fly Guam. The guys from Guam flew me to Guam. Then from Guam, the, the Vietnam people flew me from Guam to Vietnam. And right. by then I had some friends traveling that I met in Europe who- um, they were out in Asia at the time. So I was like, Hey, come out to Vietnam. And, uh, so I, I had already like started finding some people that I liked and was nice. traveling with. And I spent, I think a week out in Vietnam. And then from Vietnam, I flew to Kenya to spend about a month out in Kenya shooting for a, uh, 
a charity out there. And it was basically the same thing. Hey, I'll make your video if you fly me out and uh, put me up. And they're like, easy. Flew me out. Put me so, out. So things like things, other costs like food and those kind of things, was that out of pocket? Or were they still like, oh, we'll cover those for you too? A lot of times it was out of pocket. Like Vietnam was okay. definitely out of pocket. Um, that one, yeah. Vietnam was the only one in that trip. No, Guam. So the the Guam Music Festival paid, but small. And then Vietnam yeah. paid, but small. And so I probably use Vietnam's also like $4 a day for food. So yeah. Yeah. it's insane. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then Kenya was everything was basically taken care of because we were like an hour inland of Nairobi in like a pretty bad neighborhood. Um, and so, like, it was one of those where, like, don't go around walking around at night, don't go finding restaurants by yourself, we'll take care of you kind of things. Right. And so, um, nice. Nice. Yeah. And then from, from Kenya, I went out to Thailand. By then, I had, I think, a little bit of money saved up from those two projects. And so I was like, I'm going to buy my own ticket to Thailand and do the right. classic backpacker Thailand. Uh, nice. thing and I went to Thailand and stayed there for about a month and then finally after like four months I was like all right time to go back and reassess and recoup and that's when I was just like holy shit this is a thing I had a portfolio and that's when I had like made the decision like I'm a travel filmmaker that's who I am nice. and that's what I do and that's and then the best decision I ever made to just convince myself that that was the case because right. Once you convince yourself, it's easy to convince others. Is right. like a nice, easy now, way to did, think about it. It's also, a, I'm just saying, did it become easier once you had a portfolio? Because then you could be like, send this to people, be like, hey, this is what I did. Obviously, so much easier. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, starting right once you once like to start to push the boulder up the hill is hard, but once it starts rolling, it's like, okay, right. cool, we got a little momentum. It's, but right. yeah, it it was not easy, but once you had once we had the portfolio and like had the Right. So when you were first, like the first batch of emails you sent to the first companies, did you have anything to point to? I know how to make videos or was it just, trust me, bro. I know how to make videos. A little bit of both. Um, Oh God, I need to find, there was a, in the Are you sending the sorority video to them? Being like, yeah, oh no, it was like, like, my UC Davis stuff. Yeah. So it was like (laughs) all my college stuff, like, Hey, but it was even funnier because we made like a photo of us three and it was like, and we we knew we knew who we were, and we were like trying to play our angle of like, yeah, we're three young guys going to Europe, but we're like fun and exciting too. And we made like yeah. a photo, and in the photo, like to put under all the the emails, and the photo is like three guys, thirteen countries, one epic trip, and, so, and we're like, that's gonna get their attention. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the douchiest thing oh ever, God. but uh, yeah, we we I just used what I had, which is a great example of like you can sometimes just yeah. use what you have. But if my biggest advice from there would just be, all right, if for some reason that didn't work out for me, I would have then just tried to figure out. I would have done like how I go, did the wedding and made money. I would have figured out however I could to pay for that trip and still make client work completely right. for free. So now, then I had the portfolio, right? Interesting. Yeah. Then I could find what, people. Yeah. And what kind of videos were you were you making? Like, this is my trip highlight videos, like to pay for, like when you the, the things that they're going to pay for, or is it just like, oh, you're making a video for us for the charity for this other thing? Anything and everything, man. Like the okay, Guam right. one was a recap video. The charity video was like more corporate commercial. The okay. the Vietnam one was just getting B roll footage. Like I didn't make a video for them, but I yeah, yeah. Uh, for the hostels it was more of like a commercial style recap, but in like a right. trendy edit. So it was like whatever they wanted, I'd make it for them. Right, 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 right. right nice. Right. That's so interesting. That's so funny because like, I mean, this is, I mean, if you were starting out going, if you're listening to this and you have nothing, you still want to do this. This is also, we're doing something like say like a spec work would kind of be like, you could even go to your own city and be like, I'm going to make a travel film in my own town. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but at least show you have something, you know how to make videos versus like, trust me, bro. I you know just what I'm gotta, You just got to get a minivan. Right, yep. and you gotta you gotta make fun of Sam Colder in your minivan. That's and then right. The channel pops off. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. That's exactly how it happens for everybody. Uh, yeah. that, so you did that too. You got the minivan as well. Uh, I I did a similar route, but without the minivan. But that is the first right, video yes. I ever saw of you guys. The oh really? Sam Colder, yeah. Sam that's Colder where a lot of people first impression. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I've, we have a love hate relationship with that video, but it is what it is. I mean, so. isn't that isn't that everything when you look back and you're like, yeah. ah man, that was <laughs> this is really who I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we said, yeah. so you obviously started out doing videos for anybody and everybody, and then you can brag a little bit. Who, what brands have you worked with now? What is your your, your portfolio consisting of? Oh, um, I have worked with Canon USA. I'm a Canon USA ambassador. Um, yep. DJI. Artlist, Google, um, mostly Google, my that's a good just one. yeah little you know that little tiny company Google. I did a talk for them, yeah. which was crazy. I haven't heard uh, of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but those all four of those are all YouTube stuff. But even before pre YouTube, I had been doing travel filmmaking for up until the pandemic. About it was like 20 I started in 2016 on the first trip but didn't like to say I was a travel filmmaker until 2017 so we did a, just shy of like I think three and a half years of travel filmmaking and by the time the pandemic had rolled around like I had a uh, a travel production company called move to create with my buddy Luke we had clients like Starbucks Omega watches um, Shangri-la hotels so like very well known well established high paying clients wow. and like by the time 2020 was rolling around we were like buckling up for like Q1 you know I was 25 at the time or 26 um, but it was like Q1 2020 we were gonna make like $150,000 in projects like we had a lot lined up and then nice. everything happened and went down the way it did but I you know as terrible as the pandemic was for so many people for me it, it helped because I had all that time and space. I'm like, well, I can't travel anymore. Let's turn around and make some YouTube videos. And that's when my YouTube took off. Nice. Right. Nice. Right. Okay. right. Now, so how do you, so, so when you, you're not leveraging your YouTube channel and you were say working with Starbucks and people like that, how do you get those clients? Are you reaching out to them or are they coming to you? Uh, reaching out. It was like nine times out of 10. Well, Luke, uh, my business partner, Watch Luke yep. on Instagram, yep. incredible yep. photographer. He was definitely like a little bit better connected than I was. And so he right. brought along a lot. But a, m the majority, nine times out of ten, were we reached out to them, get us on a phone call, right? I feel like I've always been pretty good at talking and selling right. myself. And I'm very confident in who I am, whether or not it was uh, – valid <laughs> you know there yeah, i look back yeah. at the time and I'm like yeah my stuff kind of sucked but like i could sell myself and i could get myself yep. i i always think if you if i can get myself on a phone call or get myself in the room with a client there's almost no way i can't walk away with something and right. whether or not even if they don't have a budget just if it's somebody i want to work with like i would end up working with them even for free because you know you can always use that to your advantage it's like all right if i can get this video yeah. for free make it kick ass and it's for someone like shangri-la hotels uh who that's who we did that one for free but it was like here stay in our philippines resort for a week and a half in all of the nicest rooms and then we went around shooting content right. and now it's like when people saw our website they're like holy shit shangri-la hotels hired yeah. them and they don't know how much they paid you they don't know if they paid you nothing or if they yeah. paid you fifty thousand dollars so now when people see that they're gonna be like wow Nice. And so that's yeah, kind that's of dope. was my so, mindset. So you, so, you so you leverage your portfolio to, and then are you pitching them being like, hey, we have this idea for a video or more just like, hey, we're travel filmmakers. Can we make you a video? Like, do you already have an idea for like what you want to make them thought out? Or is it just like, let's no, have a chat. It was like, like hey, exactly. With. Hey, we're travel filmmakers. What's your, what? like, we want to know what you need and we want to know how we can help you. Right. right. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And so it's, and it's a lot more accessible the, than like, you realize then at that point. Because like, I always thought that these kind of things were like, hey, they reach out to you because they see something. But I was thinking, like, if you can just reach out to them, being like, "Hey, mm -hmm. your hit rate, you can just hit as many as you can, and just maybe get a little bit better." It's kind of the so. idea, yeah, absolutely. And and then my my last thing is like, say for the Starbucks one, what was it a travel video that you made for them, or like, what, the how, what kind Starbucks of video did you make? wasn't a, even a video. The Starbucks was a photo campaign that Luke did, oh. but it was through uh, his Instagram at the time. I think he had like thirty something, forty thousand followers, um, right, and so. Even that, right? That was kind of like, we were never, since Luke is based out of London and I was based out of the United States, it was kind of one of those things where we never properly formed this company because we couldn't. So it was technically right. we were both our own entities, but had the reason why we could land these clients is because it's like Luke was 19, 
or 20 at the time and I was 23, 24 and like nobody was taking us seriously but when we were moved to create when we were this company with this logo and this brand then people started taking us seriously and so we right. basically all we really did is he was a kick-ass travel photographer and I was a very okay travel videographer and we're like let's combine our portfolios and that was the whole idea right. and so like right. Starbucks wasn't even my client but it's like hey let's combine our portfolio on this so when you go to our page it's like all of right. this was together yeah nice oh that's interesting so if you were to say boil this down to five easy steps for your next for a book what would you say is your five steps to go from zero to say to being a travel filmmaker um well my parents trust fund really helped um <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say when daddy left me the money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when he bought me my first red. <laughs> yeah, small loan of a million dollars. Um, so five steps to become a travel filmmaker. Is that, I yeah. would say, or, or anything, right? But step one would, would be identify yourself as that immediately. Um, right. What do you want to do? You're that. You want to be a music video director? You're that. You want to be a travel filmmaker, you're that. Now, start calling yourself that. Because again, like I said earlier, you can't convince the world if you haven't convinced yourself. So you have to convince yourself that that's who you are. Um, so just decide, that's who I am, done. Okay. That's one of the most important steps, I would say. Um, yep. Two, spec work, right? You can't, you can't, the only way to do it is by doing it, right? Yeah. The only way to be a travel filmmaker is by making travel films. The only way to be a music video director is by making music videos. The only way to do anything is by doing it. And so whether or not you have the money, um, you have to find a way to go make something. And I would say spec work is the absolute best way to do that. And I think people always hate on free work and people are always like, make sure they value you or make sure they, you know, your value. And for me, that's all bullshit because if you're in that predicament in the first place, then you probably don't have a ton of value to begin with. And, uh, I would say if you do free work, if you do something, people always view it where it's like this company is taking advantage of me for their benefit, flip it on its head. I'm taking advantage of this company for my benefit. I'm using them to make a badass commercial that I can then put on my portfolio that nobody uh, would really know. So spec work, um, that would be two. Persistency, understanding that this is a long game, understanding that this is not something that's going to happen immediately uh, is is so, so important. Um, so that would be step three. Step four is understanding that you still need to, to be a human and you need to make fun things you need to make things that bring you life and make things that inspire you and while you're really kind of along in this journey and i know everyone still needs to make money and pay the bills but like while you're being lost in that make sure you're setting aside time to inspire yourself as an artist okay. because that's so crucial and step five would be to Make That's raps. It, just Call make out Peter raps. McKinnon and uh, <laughs> and he'll blow up your channel for you. Yeah, and exactly. You'll ride off to the sunset. Uh, what would step five be? Uh, step five would just be, I guess, uh, maybe I'd, is there any I'd like switch it around steps of like of like I once I did this, this is when I like oh I actually like started getting the work or whatever. Not really. For me, okay. it was a huge process and. And I guess step five is understanding I, that maybe it's similar to the persistence thing. Maybe this is just a four step with a bonus fit. But step yep. five is understanding that it's a process and understanding that they're, for me, I think there's so much bullshit on the internet of like, this is what you do. This is what you don't do. And, and that's what stresses people out because everyone's telling you what is right and what is wrong and what works and what doesn't work. And the yep. only way to do anything is by figuring it out yourself. Right. Yeah, you can yeah. take advice from Sam Newton. You could take advice from Stephen and Mitchell. You could take advice from Peter McKinnon. You could take advice from whoever you want to take advice from. But that doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Like what yeah. I say works might not work for you. What you guys say works might not work for who's listening. And so that's what you have to take everything with a grain of salt of like, 
you have to understand the only way to really know what works for you is by doing it. And right. I think a lot of people get stressed out because they're like, you told me if I posted every day, I'd be um, have a billion followers. And I did. And it's not working. It's like maybe that's not your thing. Maybe you yeah, need yeah, to true. adjust. Maybe you need to work on bigger projects that bring you more life and more. So like yeah. everybody's story is different. Everybody does it differently. And like I hate just how f- like finite everything is and definite yeah. with like I, I also really black or white. It's this or that. I also really hate kind of like this is a big thing on the internet, but like timeline, like basically what people like people get very miss a lot of misconceptions on how long things take because there's like on the internet there's so many things like how to say make ten thousand dollars a month in thirty days or how to do this or like how to do all these things as fast as possible, but like in this realm you can't do things as fast as possible because you and the like, thing is it, it's it's not that those are not impossible things to do like making ten thousand dollars a month through copywriting or whatever you your shtick is but it's just oftentimes they in the video and they try to sell it to you in their course as in 30 days and it's like no 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 take that times it by 12 and maybe you'll be halfway there yeah and because then, nobody wants uh how to build your travel filmmaking career in over 10 years of exactly, failing and, it doesn't <laughs> sound very good it's not very <laughs> sexy but it's like if you, this is what you want to do, it's what yeah. no one's like, oh, I want to get a job as, you know, say you're a nine to five person, you apply to be a banker or something, right? And you really want to be a banker. You don't go in there and think how to become the CEO in 90 days. <laughs> yeah. It's not going <laughs> to yeah. fucking happen. You think, all right, how's, what's, what's my long term approach to, yeah. yeah. And you have to think, I, I just, like the but, amount but, but of then, time and effort I put into this is like, 10 11 plus years of my life making videos now and which to some people isn't that long and to other people are like holy shit you started in 2012 that's crazy uh and so it's like for me it's been my life it's been my identity for so long it's it's like second nature it's who i am and so i think really if you want success that's how it's got to boil down to it's got to be your personality it's got to be your identity it's got to be who you are but then they also get married to the they also get married to the idea of like I can do this in thirty days or ninety days or whatever it is, and then when it doesn't happen, inevitably it won't happen. They get really depressed and kind of just like they think this is all bullshit and just like oh no like or I can't they do think this. that it's they're, they're the problem like I didn't do something right or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, exactly. So. Um, I, I, I can already tell that that soundbite of you saying spec work for step number two is going to go so hard on our YouTube video. So thanks for that one. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> Clip it, baby. Clip it. That's right. Um, with that being said, also uh, just another kind of like, well, we'll get it. Mainly well, for the I would YouTube say that because, here, because well, yeah, I was just saying, think that because like with travel filmmaking, you can see on Instagram that there's a ton of them, right? Like, every, like there's a lot of people doing travel photography, travel filmmaking, all this kind of stuff, like wanting to travel. Do you still think there's an opportunity for more people to get into it and become oh, travel filmmakers? Absolutely. I think now more than ever there's an opportunity. I think with the advent of reels and TikTok, it's easier now than it has ever been, even right. though it's still more saturated. Like it's easier to get noticed by more people, right? You don't need a following for a video to blow up anymore. It used to be you had to have a big following in order to for it to be seen by a lot of people. Now you can have a thousand followers and get a reel that blows up to a million, right? And you might not always have a reel that hits a million every time, but now you're, what, what's important is your name, your, your brand on the top of that reels feed has been fed to all the right people. And I did some study, don't quote me, don't Google it, but something along the lines of like, you have to see a brand like five times to really trust it. Right. You have to see the logo. You have to hear about it five times to like trust it enough to like purchase or trust it enough. So like if they see your reel five times, now all of a sudden you're a name. Right. And there's so many people in the industry that I don't follow, but like I know exactly who they are. Right. I can be like, oh, yeah, you're the guy you did that. And so I think there's a lot more opportunity to break into this space. Um, I think what's tough is learning how to sell yourself. And it's one thing to put reels up and do do enough reels but like then how do you sell yourself how do you stand out from the crowd because cool you got a viral reel using a trending sound was it that inspiring maybe not was it that moving maybe not was it cool to look at and fun yeah and so like how do you take how do you take this ability to reach so many people and now brand yourself so that you're different and still find a way to make money and that's kind of the tougher part but that's where the whole you know 
working at it over a long period of time and and learning and and fucking up and figuring things out that's where that's so important because as much as i can try to tell you what works and what doesn't work the best way to do it is by doing it right nice nice yeah that's that's really good and clip um, okay <laughs> yes and clip that for the youtube video perfect um, okay, so that's pretty much all of our travel filmmaking related questions. Uh, there might be another one that kind of sneaks in here somewhere, but yeah, I think that's definitely enough content for us to make our YouTube video about. So thank you. <laughs> um, is there, I'm just moving on to kind of a standard question that everyone asks is, uh, what is your current filmmaking kit looking like these days? What are you using? What's your go-to? Uh, I'm shooting right now on the Canon EOS C70. Um, nice. I say EOS because it's the proper way to say it. Uh, is it? Did, did, did Canon coach you through that one on how <laughs> no. to say it? <laughs> Not at all. Uh, you're, yes. get, you're getting paid right now to say all this. <laughs> yeah, every time I bring up Canon, it's, I check my bank account and there's another $1,000. So the more I name drop. Uh, no, I shoot on the, the, the C70 and I have three cameras. I have the C70, the R5C, and the R6 Mark II. The R6 Mark II is like my... YouTube everyday right. camera. Um, the C70 is like anything bigger project cinematic. And then travel for the most part is the uh, R5C because it's like the perfect little in between of everything. Right. Yeah. Nice. And, and you have the, and you have and the so double you, handle set up. And I do. It is, that is, yeah. uh, uh, I really like you put a top handle on top of a top handle and it lowers the weight. So, like, if you think of, or just like anything, why people hold a tripod tripod upside down and, like, the weight of the camera is, like, super low for those tracking shots. It's the same thing. It's, like, makes the camera a little bit more stable. It looks dumb as hell, but it yeah. it stabilizes it a bit and gives it a little bit more of that sway, which I really like. Nice. 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 And so you're a, you're a Canon ambassador. What does that entail? What does that mean? What do you get from being a Canon ambassador? Um. Well, the cameras are a nice start. I did, so they, did they, they give, give you the cameras? cameras? They gave me one of these. Um, I purchased the other two for a discount via them. So, okay, one was given to me. The other two was a nice discount. Um, I would say that. But yes, nice. I would not have. I would probably not have three of these cameras if I wasn't a Canon ambassador. Um, exactly. I, if I had to choose. Like if I had to choose one, I would probably go R5C because it's the best of like both worlds, where you have kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit more YouTube y small, um, but then also like that 8K RAW is absolutely one of the craziest things I've ever shot in, and it looks. Have you just experienced as... any like overheating issues? Because I know that was a big no, no, thing no R5 when the R5 R5, first came out. The R5, but not R5C. It has a okay. fan, a built-in fan. It's got uh, dual native ISO. Um, so for Canon uh, users, what, that's awesome. What Sony, that? the, Sony yeah, users will giggle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's 3,200, uh, which is, you know, it works. Okay. That's, it's not, I, I get it. I get it. The Sony has, but, I think 12,800. Yeah, whatever. So. <laughs> Uh, and that and that that's the a uh, Sony A7S III, which is like they're just like it's not even like a big cinema camera. So. We'll get there. The colors <laughs> so are amazing, yes. and I love how easy it is to grade. And I would say that there's really nothing on the market, and that body size for the the 8K RAW is absolutely one of the craziest yeah, things yeah. I've ever shot in. And and being able to to have but are, there, are the file sizes just massive though like are they are drives? yeah i have yeah. the cf express card so it goes stupid with that but uh we <laughs> we had a, a little process that kind of helped helped us out a little bit with that um but yeah it was it's it's that's what i shoot on and um I, I think i love the c70 the most though it's just like the dynamic range and it's more it's less like like a lot of times with Sony and Canon and Nikon, they're, it's like very digital. Like C70 yeah. is so filmic and it's so beautiful yeah. and soft and yeah, nice. Yeah. 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 I find that so with the black magic as well. Cause like that also just looks so yeah. good, but yeah. Sony has a little bit of digital. Yeah. Yeah. But ain't nobody got yeah. time for black magic battery life and black <laughs> yeah, magic. Uh, we were actually just stabilization. Using the 6K Pro. Yeah. We were just using the 6k pro yesterday. And it was a grind and it was like, cause like the battery just keeps dying and I'm like, oh my God, switch it out again and again and again. And it's like, it's a pain. Little in the things that are like, the, it looks cool, but stabilization, battery life and autofocus. It's like, dude, I can't, what? 
What? Now, how? now that you've seen how good they can get, I can't go back. Yeah. It's, Does the yeah. C seventy have autofocus? Yeah, autofocus um, and stabilization. Stabilization. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's nice. got. Do you get? And do you insane get any, battery like, life. Yeah. Yeah, that's also a really big plus. Um, but do you get any like lenses from them? Or do you even get printers from Canon? Do they send you any of those? I do have a printer. Yes, but that okay. was from an event that I did, and they basically lent it, and it was supposed to be a loaner, but they were like, hey, it was used so many times, keep it. And I was like, right. oh, sick. That's so I have nice. a, a printer, which is nice. Um, I do get a, a, I've gotten a couple lenses from them, mostly for different projects, and then the rest, same thing, just buy it at a discount. Um, yeah. But I don't know how much of this I'm supposed to say, but I think it's well, fine. Okay, well, if you, re- if you realize after you can't say anything, we'll cut it all out. <laughs> I keep it this, in. I, this I'm, not is saying exclusive anything, I'm not saying anything guy. that bad. This they love exclusive. me. They love me. That's good. That's um, good. Are but, you, I, I was it, just going to say, with this whole Canon Bastard thing, are you like, are you now, do you have to do a certain number of projects? Like, how, what does the workload look like no, for them it to is, make this worth it for them? Uh, give me two seconds. I need to text my buddy. I just realized. Okay. To let him know something, and then I will answer this question. So this part you can Definitely. cut out. This isn't very exciting for the podcast. That's right here. Sam Newton texting his buddy about something that he has to do right this second. It seems very important. Rocking the iPhone 14. Uh, no, I'm actually screen. doing uh, another podcast right after this. <laughs> Talk about oh, podcasts. are you? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we were supposed. I said if we did this 10 to 11:30. And then 11.30 to 1 was like my, and I'm like, yeah, we'll probably be closer to, because I don't want to stop the conference. We're, I'm good. I, I don't want to, I told right. him like okay. closer to 12-ish, okay. so we're good. Um, okay. Question was, oh, well, let's see if I can just get back in the same and so you could just cut. That's right. We could cut this. Yeah, I marked the time code, so we're good. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say my deliverables, I don't have specific deliverables like Every month, I need to shout them out, or every. Right. Uh, basically, my deliverables are pitch them. That it. Okay. That's it. Like pitch them my ideas, and basically, I got put into a ambassador program called the Canon Collab Ambassador Program, which is a program they put together to essentially like think of it as TSA pre-check, right? Where you uh, you get pre-screened to fly on the plane and so it's a little safer it's a little faster canon is obviously a bigger company it's an older company and so uh in the past it's been a little bit more you know it's like red tape to jump through to get a video approved right because you have to there's so many different things and they're such a well-respected company they don't want anybody to step on anybody's toes but i think they realize how fast content moves nowadays um and like if you're going to spend six months on a video by the time the video is out it's gone it's worthless it's pointless um not pointless, but you get the idea. If it's like for a yeah. camera, if it's for a, we need it and we needed it yesterday. News. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so, basically, the idea of this ambassador program, it's kind of a dream where they're like, hey, we're gonna select this group of people, and we believe in what they do and how they make it, and like pre-screen them for you know whether or not they represent the brand well, and then from there, we don't have to do any of that stuff, and I just work with a pretty small group of people now instead of like. The whole right. marketing department, I work with a, a group of like five or six people within Canon. And then that way I can just show up. This is my idea. Here's the budget I'm thinking of. And then, you know, we, we work back and forth on making that happen. And then I go out and make it. And I think, um, especially That's coming awesome. from That's my so nice. YouTube, yeah, it's it's an absolute dream. And it's a, something I would never take for granted. But it, again, it's taken me 10 years to get here. And I've shot with Canon for five years. And, um, it, you know, one day I just got an email in my inbox from them. I was like, holy oh, shit. So they, yeah, I was going to say, they most likely came to you. It's not like you were like, hey guys, yeah. can I they, join? They 100% just hit me up out of the blue. I thought it was a fake email, to be honest. I didn't respond for two <laughs> days. Um, I had to like do a bunch of research and recon. And then I got on a call and I was like shaking. I was like, what? This is real? <laughs> it's happening. And, it's happening. Yeah. And so it, it's been a really, really cool ride. And coming from my, you know, I'm a very business first kind of guy I like to think about how I can establish relationships within business and um, coming from YouTube I think I hit a lot of different niches and a lot of different worlds and you know they have some incredible people Rory Kramer um, they have Ben Haggerty Miss Hatton an incredible aerial photographer all very well established creators in the industry um, 
who shot for Beyonce, Adele, you know, yeah. chain smoker. They, like there's they're making stuff for it's like the names of the industry, and then they're like, then we'll get that turtleneck dude on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get that yeah. guy too. Yeah, he kind of fits the vibe. He yeah. passes the vibe check. <laughs> yeah, you're but like the ugly duckling in the whole group. You're like, oh, dude, there's all these. Know, yeah, like, I always say the, the meme. People have you seen there's... the meme of the the military guys and there's a clown just in it? Yeah. Have you ever seen that meme? That's me. Yeah. I'm the clown in that group. But I knew right. I was originally I was like, all right, I'm the only you know before you could buy verifications. I was the only non-verified person there, uh, and I was like, well, shit. How do I stand out? But I was also the only YouTuber, the only like one. I was I'm the youngest one in the group. I'm the one, and so I'm like, all right, how can I use all of this to my advantage? Right, that's where the business side of me comes in. Instead of like, oh, disadvantaged, they're all bigger, they're working with cooler people. Canon will never approve my projects. Mine's like, all right, well, I run my own channel. I don't need to rely on like Chris Brown showing up to a shoot. I don't need to like right. get clearance for all that. It's just like. I can make this decision and I can move fast, right? I can right. pitch you a video. Yeah. And so uh, they told me about this program. I got signed on. And within a month, I had pitched them my first video about Norway. And two weeks after I pitched them, I was in Norway. And f- a month after that, we were having the premiere in LA. So within two nice. months of being an ambassador, I had pitched, come up with a proof of concept, made it. And that did insanely well. That was my Eye of the Storm film. And yep, they right. obviously were like, holy shit, I was the first one in the ambassador group to pitch anything. The first one to not only pitch it, but like go through with it. And I think in that ambassador program, I for sure have done the most with them because I'm the most active. I'm like, hey, I don't have a Beyonce documentary like Ben Haggerty's yeah. working on. I'm just like, all right, well, what's the next video we can work on? And so Are, I've been on top was it, of it. Um, it was... Uh... What was I going to say? It's like you, so is this ambassador thing relatively, a relatively new thing? It's not like something that's been running forever that you just kind of joined in? Brand brand new, first, first oh, yeah. of its kind, first like tier, yeah. Wow. Nice. Okay, that's That's, awesome. that's very interesting. So this is the next question. Might be a little probing, but uh, we'll see where we go with it. Probe you don't me. have to, okay. <laughs> uh, you don't have to name the brand, name anything about them. All you have to do is say, what is the highest amount you've been paid for one video? Highest just amount, a, just a number, one billion. I mean, if you want to share the brand, by all means, uh, go ahead. But like, bit of a requirement, just a number. I won't share the brand for legal reasons, uh, okay, no. but I'd say it's not as not as simple as just like one video. Obviously, you know, you tie in so many different things like usage rights and like, can they make yeah. ads out of it and name and likeness. Let's say one campaign. Then one like campaign, one campaign. yes. Uh, I think just shy of sixty thousand dollars. Nice. And that that's was that one. that was to produce and everything. That was that was the budget. That wasn't yeah. what I'm walking away with, but I still right. walked away with a solid cut. Nice. Right. So that nice. was nice. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. That was my most probing question I had. It was just like, <laughs> okay. That's not oh, a yeah. that's not a normal thing, okay, everybody. That's not something that I like no, no, wake no, up no. and I'm like, oh nice, sixty thousand dollars. Another one of the inbox. Let's Got do him. it. <laughs> Another one. Wow, making money is so easy. Um, that is my yeah. I, I come my average video does not come anywhere close to that. But uh, right, yeah. right, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you okay? Uh, so okay, when you're when you're doing these like all these different things, traveling, doing whatever, how? much are you actually working? Like, this is something I'm very interested about. Like, are you working more than 40 hours a week? Are you working less than 40 hours a week? On are you grinding till the it, sun, sun goes down kind of thing? Like, is this yeah, like is a it, constant grind or you actually have time is to it, live a normal life? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a tough one. A constant grind would be the, the right, more right answer than other. Um, but also I do... Again, this is kind of a fucked up one in my mind where it's like if you want to sit down and break down the psychology of Sam, it's a a weird one because I do really, really, really love what I do. Um, I love everything about it. I wake up every morning excited to make videos, excited to like, and there's not a single instance where I'm like, oh, I'm so annoyed with this job. Now I have to like I for everything I've ever worked towards, I'm in a spot where I'm so unbelievably grateful and happy doing youtube is so cool uh working with clients like dji and canon are so amazing and like the fact that i get those opportunities to make videos that i want to make it's not like i'm making an ad it's not like i'm it's just like what do you want to do sam go make that 
and we want to f- help fund it. So it's the absolute dream. Uh, and so that's why I can set that up with like, I do work almost all the time. I work almost seven days a week. I'm constantly like thinking about what's next and what, like what I can be doing and like sitting down and, and planning stuff out and pitching stuff and planning a trip. And so it, it is, I somewhat of a struggle where I'm like, all right, I need to be better at like turning off. Um, because I mean, that's the right. big, everyone always talks about the downsides of nine to fives, but no one ever talks about the downsides of working for yourself. The upside yeah. of a nine to five is like a lot of times it's like, all right, it's Friday at five. I'm out. Fuck Clock you. Out. I'm out. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. out. Fuck you. If I get my time off for like two weeks, I'm out. Yeah. Fuck you. I'm gone. Well, there, there's, Sorry. A, there's a classic yeah. quote called, I quit my nine to five so I could work 24 seven. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just like the exact opposite. However, it's something that you potentially are actually interested in doing. Yeah. So, so. I, you don't work like, it's just kind of like a constant every day. But again, this goes back to my, it's my identity. It's who I am. It's, you know, when I wake up in the morning, uh, and like think about what videos I want to make or, you know, if it's nine o'clock at night and I'm sitting on the couch responding to YouTube comments. It's like other things that people don't really right, right. quite understand. Yeah. Or it's just the tiny, like the upside of YouTube is like the engage or uh, Instagram, sorry. The downside is like, okay, comparison, all of that. The upside is the engagement and the community element. And like going on to Instagram, this is where my buddy Luke has taught me so much is like, he'll just go on to Instagram and just spend 30 minutes commenting on people's photos, sending messages, um, supporting other creators. Holy shit, that goes so far. Just yeah, be yeah. there. Just be in the DMs of the right people. Whether or not they follow you or know who you are, they will. The people that are genuinely like supportive of me and aren't like, hey, Sam, love your stuff so much. And then the next DM is like, so I'm buying a camera. What do you suggest? Instead, <laughs> yeah. it's just like, hey, Sam, just reaching out. Just want to say, I think your stuff's really cool and it's inspired me a lot. Uh, you may or may not see this, but just want to leave that there. And then maybe in another two months, be like, dude, I just watched a new video. Loved how you did this. And those names start to like really, like yeah. you start to recognize them and you start to see them. And uh, whether or not they're well, someone I'm, I'm bigger sure than you, you or you get in your... Time, but even on YouTube, you have like commenters that are around every single video. They're like, yeah. they're oh, like, absolutely. Hey, love the and, video. This is great. And you get, you, you just start building that community. And I think that's the coolest part about Instagram. So when you're talking about working all the time, there's little things like that that don't really have a place in other normal jobs. And so, uh, yeah, I do work all the time. I used to travel you like your eight months out of the all? year. Uh, no, not like I'm the least organized person you will. So you're not, you're not like, oh, I'm going to work from nine to five. And then like that was my set hours and whatever happens, no, happens. No, no, okay. no, no. I luckily don't have a, a kid. Uh, I don't yeah. have, I have a girlfriend now. Uh, and so I'm balancing, trying to figure out she's a, bit a nurse of pressure there, so, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to figure out she can't just drop what she's doing and like, let's go to Cambodia. Um, yeah. it's not as easy for her. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so I'm balancing, you know, it's a little bit of a balancing act, but I, I think right. it's for the better. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm traveling a little bit less than I used to, but I'm still working just as much. And, but I, I absolutely love yeah. it. And how, I'm how young, much are you I'm healthy. I have the, the energy too. Um, minimum, like my lowest is three months out of the year is what, okay. like, I don't want to travel right. any less than that. So I think this year so far, what is it, June, we've done, I did a month in Indonesia and um, did I do, was that this year? Yeah, it was January. And I did about two, like 10 days in Patagonia. So we're just about that halfway month. And I think think I've done about six weeks of travel. So yeah, we'll do another. I'm really trying to hit Antarctica by the end of the year. Uh, Antarctica, oh that'd be Antarctica. so awesome. Uh, if you need someone to go with you, I'd love to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what, what camera do you shoot on, huh? What do you shoot I can, on? I can, uh, I can buy, I'll, buy a, I'll buy a Cannon. <laughs> I got a Canon <laughs> SLR, I can use that. Uh, yeah, so that, basically I turn 30 years old next February, and my goal is right. to hit all seven continents by the time I'm 30. And nice. so that's my, my seventh that's, continent. Now, is do you have something in the works for Antarctica? Like, is that... Yeah, like, right, right now I'm currently building that project out trying okay, to figure right. out what it looks like so How anybody listening if you have any antarctica plugs please 
Reach out. Yeah, I'm, I'm like sandwich. round zero. All I know is I want to get out there. I don't really know what project I want to do, what story I want to tell. Um, so that's kind of the... Dude, that'd be unreal. There's really a bucket out there, list. <laughs> yeah, I'm stoked. <laughs> that's going to be insane. Nice. Okay. Well, what is your, uh, what's your craziest traveling story? Craziest traveling story? Man. Have you, you have any near-death experiences? Near death? No, I've been pretty. I was like almost robbed in in Kenya. I would say that's like my sketchiest. And by okay. almost okay. robbed, I mean like I was followed. I got dropped off by my taxi at like one a.m. in Nairobi, and I had Jeez. all my shit with me, and I was dropped off in the wrong spot. Like Kenya doesn't do addresses, like numbers. Okay. You know, like twenty one. XYZ Street. It, it'll just say like the building name and the street. I could be butchering this, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Right. Um, and so I was dropped off like a half a mile or a mile away from where my, I was like, oh, dude. And this is like one in the morning after I landed first time ever in, in Kenya. And I was like, I was like, okay, no, this is fine. Yeah, yeah, Sam, you problematic piece of shit. This isn't a bad thing. It's just another country. And then I walk in and then immediately like these two guys were on the other side of the street and they're crossing or they're walking. And they stopped, they, like I could tell them, or tell that they like said something to each other, stopped, and then turned around and walked like parallel to me on the other side of the street. <laughs> and then they like, crossed ugh. the street and were like 20 feet behind me. And I was fucking freaking out. I had all my gear on me. I had all. Um, and this was the Kenya trip, like one of my third trip ever, I think. Um, wow. And uh, there was a, another apartment building like probably another, a quarter mile away from where my address was. And I basically, there was like security guards at each one. And I, I just peeled off and I was like, these two guys behind me are like really definitely following me. They've been following me for the last like 15 minutes. Can I just stay or say I'm staying here? And the, the guy's like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, he pulled me in and he's like, that was so smart of you, man. Those guys were not. Yeah. And I was like, they're was not like, here Jesus. to make friends. Yeah. <laughs> no. And I, I went in and, and the, those guys kind of hovered for a second and then dipped out. And then the security guard, nicest guy ever, like peeked out and he's like, all right, you're good. And then he said, hold on one sec. And then he pulled around with his little golf cart and told me to hop in and then drove me to the, the, the spot. So nice. that was like the, so I've never, luckily I've never had any like terribly, Sketchy. I I also I had my appendix removed in Iceland. <laughs> yes, so we was... met you. We met you in London, like the, literally like a oh, week yeah. after. Oh wow. was. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah, because we, uh, we've yeah. actually met in person before. Which yeah, was the first time we ever met. Yeah, because we were both in London for that. Uh, yeah, event just having a beer and just strolling around London. Man, that was a good time. That was walking around we at two out, o'clock we in the morning. Like, yeah. We were out at two a.m. trying to find something to eat, and there was just like for some reason the nothing. The shawarma. Or, yeah. Yeah, and we're trying to find. We, we were trying to like. There's a club here. We're like, there's this club. We're like, let's go in there. And then it was like some weird thing. Immediately. Well, I remember it was just like I wanted to find like a. I didn't want to do a club. I'm like, like I just want to go to like a dive bar, like a classic pub. But everything yeah. in London closes at like midnight. And yeah. it was yeah. so the dumb. Hell? It was like, and I the just only want... thing open is like a rave. Like it's Yeah, like... exactly. <laughs> Till 6 a.m. And I was like, that's not the vibe. I just wanted to go somewhere that's playing like, come on, Eileen, where I could just <laughs> order a beer and just feel like I'm in England. But it was like, all right, you got to do that at 8 p.m. You can't do that at 12. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I got my appendix removed in Iceland. And that was kind of a scarier moment. But really? Yeah. yeah. Was there like yeah, a you, moment did, you're did, like, did, oh, shit. Did oh, you have yeah. to pay for that in terms yeah. of like eight thousand dollars? Which it, I thought they had universal health care. They do, but that it's not for people that don't live there. Um, oh, right. It's for citizens. So uh, I don't do have, have travel insurance. I didn't. I did not have travel insurance. I do now. Um, yeah, but luckily, as an American, right? I'm thinking of uh, what if I was an Icelander, Iceland, Icelandin, Icelander, <laughs> Icelander, sure. whatever that came to America. And had that surgery, it would have cost three hundred grand out of pocket. So for yeah, it to yeah. be eight grand, it sucked, um, and definitely was like all the money I had in my bank account at the time. Um, but I was like, hey, can I set up? Payment? Do you have insurance for when you're in this when you're at home? Like if that would yes, happen at home? Yes. And I reached out to my insurance company, and they were like, Kaiser sucks ass. It was uh, the least <laughs> helpful thing ever. Um, but yeah, it, I would say those two. It sounds fucking kind of 
I don't know. I don't know how to say it in like a good way, but like <laughs> I've traveled to so many places and done yeah. so many things. So it sounds really, really bad. And like, it, I don't know. I'll just say, it. but like I, there's a lot of things that I've done that are like so crazy that I oftentimes forget. I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. That, that was, you know, now that I think about it, that was a crazy story. And so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I should be better at being like, yeah. Look at no, all I, this. That, that's, but. that's such a classic thing. We've had so many people be like, yeah, I just can't remember. And then like, they'll be like, I don't know, like an hour later. They're like, oh, there's this one. And like, you just like, think of all these great stories you could have told, but you just can't remember them. But True. Whatever. Yeah. So, so. It's a very blessed position to be in. And I feel like it a is. douchebag saying yeah. that, but it's the, yeah, the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. One of the, we're moving here to the end here, but one of the fewer, uh, one of the last questions here is uh what would you consider having made it doing what you're doing? And also kind of like in that same question, what does the next say five to 10 years look like for you in your vision, what you'd hope it to look like? Are you saying, what do I consider from here to the point? Well, no. Yeah. The future? Have, have, right. have you made it? And if not, what would you consider? I've made it. I've 100% made it in my eyes, like not yeah. made it in the sense of like, I, for me and how I've always like looked at it is like, if you can live comfortably making the things you love with the people you love, then you've made it, right? Perfect. If you can, so I think I made it, quote unquote, like two years ago, even before the Canon ambassadorship, even before I was like, when I had 50,000, so before the Peter shout out, I had like 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. I was just about to go full time in the YouTube, but I was still like, I loved what I was doing. I was making cool things with cool people. I lived in a place that I loved. That to me is 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 making it. And um, yeah. I feel like it could be reverse. Where right, I could get to a point where I unmake it. If that makes any sense, where I get to a point where I might make so like a ton of money and be working on crazy projects, but just hate what I've like become. Yeah, and hate Built. and that's so like I don't like to think of making it as like a career achievement level but making it as in like a checking in am i enjoying the prop because even now where i'm at like there's so many times where i'd look back i'm like fuck to be 23 in iceland and in the back of a car with like three of my best friends camping for three weeks with no problems like to be able to do that again it's i can but it's so much harder so making yeah. it is so relative and i don't want people watching or listening to like judge it on the level of like oh you made it once you hit a million subscribers and once you're making x yeah. amount in revenue and once you're um so i would say yeah i think i've i've made it for a while and i'm very very grateful for that nice and and what do you think the next 5 to 10 years look like for you what do you hope what are your plans that's another answer I'm going to give you a cryptic answer to because I sure. don't think about that. I think okay. about, uh, I constantly check in with myself of like, do I enjoy what I'm doing now? If the answer is yes, then I'm going to keep doing it. So I never right. think, especially in the landscape of things, like five, to think 10 years ahead right now is impossible. It's impossible. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to be doing in 10 years. I don't know what's going to, the technology is going to be in 10 years. 10 years ago, uh, like Instagram only just starting. Yeah. It was like Instagram didn't have stories. It only had photos. It didn't have videos. It didn't have, think about all of those things. Right. Yeah. Uh, all these things that you're like, Oh wait, was that really that? And when I went to college, it was Snapchat and then Snapchat came out with Snapchat stories in like 2013. And I don't think Instagram did Instagram stories to like 2014 or 2015 or Instagram didn't do videos to like 2015 or something. And so, you really don't know. I so long story short, I don't definitely not ten years. Five years down the line, I'd like to own a home. Uh, would be a, right. a nice uh, a nice thing is to to buy a home and and put my money into something that I'm like, all right, cool. At least this is my home base. But other than that, as long as I'm loving what I'm doing and and enjoying the direction I'm in, I tend not to think too far ahead, which is a very privileged position to be in. I understand because I have gotten this far. Um, if I, I had that hindsight, like, you know, if you would ask me this question when I was 23, I would have been like, what I want to do is I want to make consistent income traveling the world. And I want to, but now that I've gotten to that spot, I'm basically just like, I want to keep checking in with myself, making sure I'm happy with where I'm at and the work that I'm doing and like continually see my videos and think to myself, like 
that's me. I'm proud of that video. I'm not selling out. Yeah. This is like that's a Sam Newton video, regardless of the brand that's tied to it. And if I keep having those connections with my films, then I'm very happy with it. Nice, nice, nice. That's a solid ad. clip. It. Wow, clip that one too. <laughs> that's right, clip that one as well. Um, okay. Another, this is, I, I, let's move into, this is going to be kind of like our outro. We're going to move into just some rapid fire questions. You can answer them with three sentences or less if you want to. If you want to expand on them, go right ahead. Cool. Um, but what is your favorite movie? Oh, my favorite movie, Django Unchained. Ooh, okay. that's a good one. Haven't seen it, Where it's good. <laughs> no, I haven't seen it either. <laughs> oh, I've heard, God. I've, I've heard so many people talk about it, though, and I'm like, I should watch that so one. So much like, fun. Oh, God, answer. it's so much fun. I love Tarantino and like how he, yeah, how he yeah. just ta- takes the rules of filmmaking and just throws them out the window, and they're like, yeah, that's great. You should watch yeah. it. Nice, nice. And then where are you traveling to next? Where am I traveling to next? Ooh, actually, right now, I don't know. Ooh, First wow. time in a while. Okay. Normally, when I travel somewhere, it's within like, six weeks of like from the time I buy a ticket to the time I'm in the country so I don't really know until I know so I don't know right now what do you uh, what do, you do uh, for what do fun you... that's not filmmaking uh, what do I do for I love skiing big skier nice. Nice. you are a big skier uh, you should come to Banff in the winter sometime and we'll go skiing because it's I would love that class. I would love nothing more than that I love have skiing you ever, have you ever uh, done backcountry skiing I have not I'm okay. not a very good like powder skier. I'm a very good. Uh, give me a groomer on a bluebird. I will go. I can hit like 63 miles, 64 miles an hour. I can fly, Ooh. baby. So uh, TMS XM but, Newton hitting the slopes maybe sometimes. Yeah, but once I get on the fat <laughs> skis and go into the trees and go like I'm still good skier, but I'm not like the. I always say in. California, there's not a huge ski community unless you live on the mountain. So, like, I'm a yeah, yeah. very, very good skier from like what I came up around. <laughs> but then once I right. meet up with people who like ski every day, I'm a terrible skier. But again, that right. goes into comparison. This isn't very rapid fire. Skiing, um, soccer, love playing soccer, uh, yeah. sport, and then sports would be my other thing for sure. I'd be huge, which is weird because in the creative community, there doesn't seem to be a lot of overlap with people there that isn't. love sports and people. That's why I love Danny Gavertz. He's a big sports guy too, and I, yep. me and Danny will talk sports. But huge football fan, American football. Uh, huge really? baseball fan. My baseball team sucks right now, and we're supposed to be amazing. Padres, unfortunately. Uh, oh. And then I love playing soccer. So, so I would say sports, anything competition. I love competition. Uh, nice. And so, if you give me uh, a game and a task and someone to beat, I will. I'm all nice. about it. Nice. Go to the ends of the earth to do exactly that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, next one here. What is your favorite pickup line? I know you're not single anymore, but when it when you were, uh, you oh have man, one? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, it, I mean, see, I'd say Michaela, love her to death. She's the best. The worst part about not being single anymore is I'm a very flirty person. And so they're like, I loved, even when there was no, like, I was like, there's no chance. I would love just being like a giggly, like a hilarious fail with the girl was always funny to me. So like, yeah. if you post, uh, if you ever see someone post uh, a view, my classic was like, right, you know, summertime, they're traveling, they post uh, a photo of like oh, what they're you, looking yeah. at, sunset of dinner of, and then I always just would respond, the, I bet the view from the front camera was better. Just always got a little laugh. Just nice. always got a little laugh. Whether or not it was like, wow, that was bad, or wow, it's just like corny. It's bad. It, yeah. Now nice. people are gonna steal that. Don't fucking steal that. Not that I need it anymore. You could take it. Run with it. Go, go do that's it. Right. That's right. It should be passed is, on. Uh, better. Yeah, that's right. Move it yeah. on. Pass it on to the next guy. They can get some use out of it. Uh, do you have any hidden talents? Hidden talents. I oh, damn skiing would have been my. Okay. Uh, soccer, I'm a great goalkeeper. Anything that you're that's weird that you're good at? Do you ride a unicycle? We, Steve and I not ride a unicycle. unicycle. I am no? uh, a great. I can play spike ball. I love playing spike ball. Again, that comes Ooh, to competition. Spike ball's awesome. Uh, talents. Besides that, uh, beep, 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 rapping. Uh, that's not weird. People know that by now. But I'm yeah. a very. I can. I can like freestyle very well. Nice. Right, and that's something that we didn't even touch on all that much in this is your whole like song side of the Sam Newton. Oh uh, yeah, then there's that. Episode that, uh, <laughs> two, we'll do a whole thing on the music career, that whole back end. Yeah, yeah people who don't know me who have watched this far are like, what? 
That's right. Yeah, exactly. If you don't know, uh, if you don't know Sam at all, he does a bit of a uh, rapping and music production. They're all very good. Go check them out. And I think with that being said, we're gonna we're gonna end it off here. So wait, thank dude, you hold on. For joining. One, one thing. One last thing. Do you have any questions for us? Anything uh, burning questions? Sure. Burning yeah. questions. Uh, what, what, what's a, what's one pro and what's one project for the rest of the year that you guys are excited for? Like, what's a passion project that TMS is going to be putting together? That's a good what question. Actually, I know that. Oh, like, we in, actually. Oh, wait, yeah, I have an go, uh, Okay, I'll say my answer. My thing is, uh, in the next few months, we want to do a lot more traveling. So we want to do like more travel filmmaking stuff because we've kind of been at home, not doing much. But we want to like mm -hmm. say hit Tokyo and things like that. So hell yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, this is it. Something I'm looking forward to. Editing contest is going to be coming up soon, sometime in September, October. And we want to say go to Tokyo or somewhere in Asia to get all the footage for it and do something dope. So I love it. That's something that you guys do that I also do. It's small, small little world that the editing yeah. con. There aren't too many That's people. Right. It's a great. I love yeah. that. I love yeah. your guys' editing It's always contest. so fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then my answer for that is we also in the next probably th it's probably going to be longer than three months now that we're doing th that I'm saying this, but we uh, we did it actually we did a back in 2021 we made a commercial for Nike that ended up kind of getting scrapped and it, they flew us out to New York City the whole experience it was such an it was such an interesting so like actual like, Nike thing. not like oh, a, yeah, yeah Nike. we made a commercial Nike. for Nike yeah okay no 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 like, do you like, know like actual, you know, like, uh, like uh, there's an artist named Tom Sachs. He's like a contemporary artist in New York. But anyways, we got flown out by, it's a subsidiary brand of Nike called Nike Craft for their new shoe that was coming out. It was a big deal. We we got flown out because of our POV. I think headache. I remember this. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah. we, we want to make a big, like a big, solid, like cinematic documentary style short film, still probably like 10 minutes or less, ideally, but like <laughs> cinematic, like video telling that story. Yeah, because oh, the there's, there's so much. There's so much in that my story from died. like my camera overheated. Wow, that's a first for the Sony. Oh, let's go, Ken. Ken it wins. <laughs> Woo! Oh, it's hell. It is. It is pretty warm in this room. I will be honest. Yeah. But uh, um, anyways, back to my thing. We'll just perfect use way to end. <laughs> That's right. But uh, uh, yeah, we, we want to put a big cinematic video together of telling that story, which I think would be a yeah, really awesome video. Well, like, so. There's so much. That, that, that's like an entire iceberg. Like the whole thing was just crazy. So anyways. Awesome. Should be oh, interesting. Yeah, guys. Well, I, I okay, appreciate you I, uh, having me. Yes, we appreciate you coming on. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, We've definitely had to do a part two sometime soon. So I'm, I'm yeah. always here. And what I always like to say to people watching at home, if you enjoyed it and you made it all the way to the end, uh, show me or show me. Send me. <laughs> Don't show me anything. Send me a DM uh, and uh, let me know if you listened all the way to yeah. the end. And uh, I would love to hear and, from you. And uh, so. actually, I'll, I'll also get you to shout out your uh, your stuff down below because I don't have a camera anymore, so I can't talk to Just, the camera. Oh, right here. Just my name, Sam Newton, on YouTube and Instagram. Those two things. Okay. Find me. I'll be there. like down in the description. So. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. With that being said, everyone, thank you everyone for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode.